What's up everyone? Welcome to part four of our Movidius tutorial series and in this one we're going to look at how to install NCSDK on a ROCK64. So here you can see my host is a ROCK64. I'm using Ubuntu 18 LTS for Arch64 and it's running. We're running YOLO and we're detecting a bottle so everything's working and the best thing is we're getting a nice performance boost compared to the Raspberry Pi. So if you remember from the previous video Raspberry Pi was running at about 0.7 seconds per frame. Well, the ROCK64 is doing better. It's only taking less than half a second per frame. So it may not seem like a lot, but that's actually about a 30 to 40% speed increase. So in this video, we're gonna look at how to set everything up, how to install NCSDK on the ROCK64 and get it working. So let's get started. So like I mentioned before, we're going to be using the ROCK64 with the Movidius NCS. And the reason why I chose it is because it's got better specs than the Raspberry Pi. We've got more RAM, we've got slightly faster CPU, and the big thing, we've got USB 3. So we should get better performance with our models. With that being said, this board does cost a little bit more money than the Raspberry Pi. The model I chose is the 4GB model, but there is a 2GB which is quite a bit cheaper. It's more comparable to the price of the Raspberry Pi, maybe 5 or $10 more. And like always, you're going to need a boot drive. I chose to go with the EMMC memory module because it's faster, but you can always boot from a micro SD card and save money. The EMMC memory is a bit pricey. So yeah, I got the kind of spec'd out one, but if you want to save money, get the 2 gigabyte one and use a micro SD card. So as you may know, NCSDK is only officially supported on Ubuntu 16.04, and that's on x86-64, or you can also install with Raspbian Stretch, so that's on a Raspberry Pi using the ARM architecture. But what I've done is kind of dig through the install scripts in NCSDK, and I've modified them so that it will work with the ROCK64, and the operating system that we're gonna use is Ubuntu 18. So what I've done is forked that repo, modified the install scripts, and it's pretty similar install process, but in this video, I'm gonna show you or walk you through how we're gonna set all this up on the ROCK64. So the first thing we need to do is download an operating system and write it to our boot drive, whether it be microSD or EMMC. So what you'll do is come to this ROCK64 main page. I'll add a link in the description. But if you scroll down, you'll see that there's a bunch of options for operating systems. There's Debian, there's Bionic, there's Xenial, and a bunch of Android ones. But I've tested the Debian and the Xenial. Both of them are not stable. As soon as you run sudo app upgrade, they stop working and you lose your desktop. So anyways, don't bother with those. We're going to be using Bionic LXDE. This is the newest one. It's stable. It works. So click here. And then you'll click this direct download to the latest release. It'll take us to this GitHub page and then we're gonna grab this one, Bionic LXDE ROCK64 image. So just click on it, save it, and then we're gonna use Etcher to write it to our boot drive. So once it's done downloading, we'll pull open Etcher and it's pretty straightforward to use Etcher. We're just gonna select the image, so Bionic XLD ROCK64. Then we select the drive. Usually it'll auto detect the drive. So you can, if you've only got one plugged in, it'll be the default one here. Click continue and then we just hit the flash button. It's gonna take about five minutes to flash it. But once it's done, we can plug it into our ROCK64 and boot into the desktop. So here we are on the ROCK64 desktop. We're booted into the LXDE desktop environment. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of it. I think it's kind of ugly. Um, like just look at this window explorer. It looks super old But anyways, it's one of those low resource Operating systems, so it's great for these low power boards But anyways just to show off a little bit. Here's a neofetch window. You can see Ubuntu 18 for arch 64 and Yeah, so anyways, let's move on to this install process so I've gone ahead and pulled up my GitHub page for my version of NCSDK for Arch64. And I'm just gonna scroll down to like, just take a look at the install instructions. And sorry about the uh, slow screen, I'm using VNC, so 
it's kind of a slow update to the to the board but anyways the install process is just going to be to clone this repo move into the folder we're going to call sudo make install then we're going to source our bash rc file just so we can update the path that we add to it then we're going to do sudo make api and at this point we basically have it installed now comes the optional stuff so we can install tensorflow and i've gone ahead and compiled a version of it for Arch64, so this is TensorFlow 1.9 CPU version. So I created a new repo for that. We can just clone it and pip install the wheel file. Then to install the examples, it's just gonna be like always, sudo make, make examples. So I'm not sure why I needed to add sudo, but it was giving me these permission errors. So um, that's one slight difference from the original one. But anyways, let's get started on it. So I've got a terminal open up and I'm just gonna paste the git clone command. So we'll run this and once it's done, we'll move into it and run the make, the make install commands. Cool, so that's done. So let's go ahead and cd into our folder. So now what we're gonna do is call sudo make install. Type in our password. So this is gonna go ahead and install a bunch of Python and app libraries. It's gonna take a while, probably at least an hour. It's also gonna install Cafe. So once this is done, we're gonna pick back up and continue with the install process. And while that's running, just a quick note, there is one package that you have to click yes to proceed. So just keep an eye on the install for the first half. Um, I'll try and see if I can get it to auto select yes, but um, there was one package that just seems to require you to click yes. So again, just keep an eye on it for the first half and we'll pick back up once this is done. All right, it's done. So we should see setup is complete. So now what I'm gonna do is jump back over to, this, to the GitHub repo and what we're gonna do now is call source bash RC and then sudo make API. So just move back to our terminal so we'll call source tilde slash dot bash rc. This just updates the path that we added to the bash rc file. Now what we're gonna do is call um, sudo make api, and this should be pretty quick. Cool, now that that's done, the optional step is to install TensorFlow. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm just gonna jump back over to the GitHub page and first thing we're going to do is clone this repository. So this is one I just created. And we'll jump back over to our terminal and let's just back out and we'll go right here, clone the repo. This is a repository that I created. I actually went and compiled TensorFlow for Arch64. It was a huge pain, it took a lot of time, but um, it's nice to go through that process and see how it works. So now let's go ahead and install that wheel file. So we'll call, we'll use pip3 to install it. Oops, and let's go ahead and run it. So this pip command can take a while, uh, maybe 10, 15 minutes. So I'm just gonna pause the video, pick back up when it's done. Oops, and looks like, we, okay, let me try that again. So it looks like I have a typo in the repo, but basically we're gonna install this uh, wheel file right here. So we'll call pip3 install tensorflow, and there we go. So this should take, like I said, 10, 15 minutes. So once this is done, I'll pick back up. All right, TensorFlow is installed. So now what we need to do is run make examples. So this one's gonna take the longest because it's gonna be installing OpenCV. So what we're gonna do is let's just go back and we'll CD into our NCSDK folder and we're just gonna call sudo make, make examples. Type in our password and just let it go. Um, probably three, maybe four hours for this one, just cause OpenCV takes a long time. And I've modified it to, now it's going to install OpenCV 3.4.1. The previous one that the um, original NCSDK installed was 3.3. .3. 
So we're getting a little bit newer version. And yeah, I've noticed it takes a little bit longer, but that's okay. So I'm just gonna pause it, pick back up when it's done. All right, it's done, it finished successfully. So that took a really long time. I lost track, but I think it was over five hours. But anyways, um, because it completed successfully, all these examples should be built. But if you just wanna check, we can CD into examples. We'll go to TensorFlow and let's do the inception v3 model and we can just call python3 and then we'll do the run.py file oops run.py and we should get the guitar to detect the electric guitar cool so now that that's done what i want to do is run that same tiny yolo example so i'm not going to show how we build and move everything onto the rock 64 just because all of that was covered in the previous video so if you're curious watch the previous video where we use the vm and we build the yolo um, graph and then we test everything and then move it onto the board so i've already gone ahead and moved that tiny yolo repository onto our rock 64 you can see it here so what we'll do now is i'm going to plug in my webcam into the Rock64 and run this example. All right, I've got my webcam plugged into the Rock64. Only thing left to do is to test it. So let's go ahead and run this YOLO example. So we'll first move into the desktop and into the YOLO folder. And we'll go ahead and run it by calling Python3, Py examples, and the file's called Object Detection App. So let's run this, see if it works, and see what kind of speed we're getting. So good news, it's working. We're detecting objects, the bottle, and the dining table. And the speed, it's running at about half a second per frame. So we're getting about two frames per second. Actually a little bit less, 0 0.48, 0 0.49. So compared to the Raspberry Pi, we're actually getting a pretty significant speed increase. The Raspberry Pi was running at about 0.75 frames per, or excuse me, 0.75 seconds per frame, which is like, I don't know, one and a half frames per second, 1.3 frames per second, something like that. Whereas with the Rock 64, we're getting two frames per second. So the performance increase is pretty significant. It's on the order of about 40% speed increase which is pretty good. Um, it may not sound like a lot, but 40% is definitely worth it. It's definitely a significant speed increase. So that's the Rock 64 in action with the Movidius NCS. So we're getting a pretty significant speed increase. And when you compare the price between Raspberry Pi and Rock 64, I definitely think the Rock 64 is the better option. Um, had I, known how much work it was going to be to get this NCS working with it. I definitely wouldn't have recommended it, but now that I've gone ahead and updated the install procedure and created this repo, I would definitely recommend going with it because the price really isn't too much more. If you were to go with the one gigabyte or the two gigabyte version, it's really comparable in price to the Raspberry Pi and you're getting, you know, 30 to 40% faster performance. So before we go, I just want to briefly talk about the next video. So we've covered all the setup stuff and we've compared two different boards. Well, now what I want to do is start looking at the API, looking at how we're going to load models and do inferences and things like that. Do more of the programming side of it, less of the setup side. So as an example, I found this site here, this Pi image search. And if you guys haven't checked out this site, you definitely should. They've got tons of great deep learning examples. And the one that we're gonna be doing is this one here. It's a mobile SSD model. So there, it's a full tutorial with all the code and like a walkthrough on how to set all this stuff up. So what I'll be doing is just walking through it. We're going to go step-by-step, step, implement the code, and we'll test it on both the Raspberry Pi and the Rock 64. And hopefully this will be a good way of um, getting a feel for the API, how to do inferences and things like that. So stay tuned for the next one. We'll be covering this model.
So that's going to do it for this video. I hope you found it interesting. And if you are in the market to purchase a Raspberry Pi, a Rock 64, or a Movidius NCS, I've added links in the description. And these are Amazon affiliate links. So if you do purchase one, it helps me out a little bit. But anyways, um, yeah, if you liked it, leave a like. This was a, a really a lot of work getting this, this um, code to run and get everything installed on the Rock 64. Um, it was pretty discouraging in the beginning. I really didn't think it was going to be possible, but I'm glad I've got it working and I can share it with you guys. So yeah, please leave a like. And if you really liked it, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.